Even though you can achieve a lot in Google Tag Manager without coding, knowing JavaScript opens a whole new level of possibilities. In this video, we will take a look at custom JavaScript variable, and also I will show you three use cases. You can create a custom JavaScript variable by going to variables in your Google Tag Manager container, then clicking new, variable configuration, and custom JavaScript. Here you will see a code editor where you will have to add some custom code. Custom JavaScript variable requires you to use an anonymous function, which means that a function has no name. We just use the function keyword and then the following syntax. If the function had a name, then that name would be used right here. But again, in the case of custom JavaScript variable, we need to use an anonymous function. Then this function must return something. Therefore, there must be a return statement at some point in this code. Unlike with custom HTML tag, you should not use the opening and closing script tags. This will not work because this editor right here accepts JavaScript as an input, while this is HTML code. Now let's remove these. And then we can take a look at several examples of where this kind of variable can be useful. Below this video, you will find a code that will return the time of day of the visitor. I have already copied that code, so I will just paste it right here. As you can see, we still have the anonymous function and then we have the return statement. What this variable will do is that it will take the current time of the visitor. It will then extract the current hour of the visitor. So if the visitor is browsing your site in his or her morning, and let's say it's 8 a.m., then this part of the code will get the hour and then this if statement right here will check which time of the day it is. For example, if the hour is between 5 and 12, then it's morning, then we have a condition for afternoon, evening, and night. When this variable is implemented, you could then send this variable's value together with all your GA4 events, and then you would see when are people usually browsing your site. Is it in the morning, afternoon, evening, or at night? Let's save this variable and see how it works. I usually name variable CGS, which stands for custom JavaScript, and then we can name this time of the day and click save. Now let's enable the preview mode. I have injected this container on my demo website, so I will just hit connect. And right now I am recording this video in the morning. That's why I would expect the value of the variable to be morning. I can select any event right here, for example, initialization, then variables, and the variable says morning. If I was recording this video later in the evening, then the value would be different. What is important to note is that you should avoid one thing in your custom JavaScript variables. So maybe you have an idea and you want to push the time of the day to the data layer. And maybe your code would look something like this, where you push time of day and then its value will be this right here. So in general, you should not do this because custom JavaScript variable might be invoked or in other words called multiple times and Google Tag Manager does not guarantee that this will be invoked just once. So there is always a chance that instead of one data layer push, you would get multiple data layer pushes coming from this variable. So don't do data layer pushes in the variable. Instead, if you want to push something, use the custom HTML tag. If you're wondering where exactly can you use this variable in Google Analytics, then basically what you could do is that you can go to tags. If you have some GA4 tags, then just add event parameter, it can be called time of day. Then the value will be the custom JavaScript variable. And then you could also do the same thing in your event tags. After you register this as custom dimensions layer in the interface of Google Analytics 4, then you would be able to build reports and see how many page views do you get in the morning or in the evening or at night and so on. But keep in mind that this variable looks at the time of the visitor's time zone. If you have no idea what this part is, what event parameters are or custom dimensions are in Google Analytics 4, then I will post additional resources below this video. Now let's take a look at the second use case. 
let's say that I have website where the first part of the page path always means the category or the type of the page. For example, it might be tutorials, then the other one might be support where there are some support articles. Then there might be products, which means that all pages that are in this category are related to products on the website and so on. So this would be useful to send as a content group to Google Analytics 4, where I could easily see how many pages did I get of tutorials, then of support pages, of product pages, and so on. If you want to learn more in general about what content groups are, I will post a link to a tutorial below this video. So how can I extract always the first part of the page path? In the preview mode, if I go, let's say to container loaded, I have the page path variable, and this is the value. If you don't have the page path variable, then go to Google Tag Manager, variables, then configure and make sure that the page path variable is enabled. This time I will write the code from scratch. First of all, I will just copy this for now as a mockup data that I can use as an input. Therefore, I will copy it together with quotes. I will go to my website, open developer tools, which can be done by clicking three dots, then more tools, developer tools, then I can go to console and clear everything. So first of all, I will declare temporarily a variable which is called page path, and its value will be like this. This is just for testing purposes right now. I hit enter and then if I check the value of the page path, by the way, keep in mind that JavaScript is case sensitive. So now if I check the page path value, just by entering the variable's name, this is what I get. In JavaScript, when you're working with text, you can manipulate it in various ways. One of the ways could be to split this text right here with a common separator. In this case, it could be slash because I want to get this value between this slash and this slash. We can just type page path and then there is a method called split. It will split the text by using a particular separator. As I've said, my separator will be a slash. That's why I will just enter a slash right here. And now we have four items. The first one is actually an empty kind of invisible space before this slash. Then we have the second item, then the third item, and then another empty invisible thing right here. That's why we have just an empty text right here, empty text right here but we want to get this one right here, which means that it will always be the second item in this extracted list. So I could basically just add an index of the item. In JavaScript, the index starts from zero. If I expand this, you will see that this is the zeroth element, and I want to get the value of the element of which index is one. That's why I will just type one right here. And here is the first part of the page path in the URL. I could also run a quick test to see what would be the output if I, as a visitor, was on the home page. The page path on the home page is just slash that looks like this. So I declared a new variable for the page path. And now if I use the page path split, I will just get an empty string, which is also known as empty text. And this is correct because on the home page, there is no first part of the page path. So now I've made sure that this code, at least some parts of it work fine. That's why I can start creating my custom JavaScript variable. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, new, variable configuration, custom JavaScript. Then I enter an anonymous function. Then I declare a variable, which will be page path like this. So I just enter it here. And instead of having a static value, I want to dynamically take the page path of the current page. And in Google Tag Manager, there is a page path variable. That's why I can just start typing double curly braces and select the page path like that. And now later in the code, I will be using the page path variable right here, which will take the original value dynamically from the current page. So now let me just enter the return statement. And that statement will return this value right here. It will take the page path, split it based on the separator, and then take the second item, not the first, because remember, in JavaScript, index starts from zero, and it will take the second value out of that array. And that's pretty much it. Now we can name this variable 
first part of page path and click Save. Let's click Preview to refresh the preview mode. And if I click, for example, container loaded or initialization and then go to variables, this variable will return the value tutorials because that's what I have in the first part of the page path. I understand that if you haven't worked with JavaScript at all, then even this fairly simple code might be too difficult for you. But the goal of this video is to show you several use cases and the general concept of the variable. I cannot teach you everything about JavaScript because that would be way too much for a single video. But if you want to learn much more about JavaScript and learn how to apply it in various very useful use cases, then take a look at my JavaScript course for Google Tag Manager. I will post a link to it below the video. And now we'll take a look at one final use case in this video. Let's say that I have just made a purchase and on this page there is a data layer push about the purchase information. However, the structure of this data is pretty custom. It does not follow the requirements of Google Analytics for e-commerce tracking. So I would not be able just to simply go to a tag and then enabling the send e-commerce data checkbox right here because it would not be able to take the data from the data layer because the structure of the data is custom. Instead of items, we have products. Instead of item ID, we have product ID. Instead of transaction total, we have order total and so on. While it's not difficult to use things like coupon code or order total or transaction number because they just have simple values such as text or number, the problem arises when I want to use the products array right here. We have two products, but their parameter names and structure is different than what GA4 requires. But this could be solved with a custom JavaScript variable. So first of all, I will go to Google Tag Manager. And before we start creating a custom JavaScript variable, first we will need to create a data layer variable for products because this will be our input of the data. And then later in the variable, we will transform it. So to create a variable for products, this is fairly simple. You go to Google Tag Manager, variables, then new variable configuration and data layer variable. Here we have to enter the name of the parameter in the data layer and that's just products. So type products. Then I will name the variable like that and click save. If I hit the preview to test the variable, this is what that variable would look like. We just have DLB product and it's an array. It is surrounded by square brackets and inside this array we have two products, one product and another product. Now let's go to the custom JavaScript variable. I will not be writing everything from scratch because we will also be working with loops and that is a bit too complex for this level of video, but I will still try to give you a general explanation of what the code does. But if you want to learn like ins and out of this, then take a look at my JavaScript course. So in variables, let's click new, variable configuration, custom JavaScript, and then as always, we will start with an anonymous function. And first we will declare a variable that will use the data layer variable as an input. So we can name this, let's say var products, and its value will be our data layer variable. Then we will create a variable, which can be called, let's say items. And for now it will be just an empty array. What will happen is that we will use custom code that will go through each product and based on its data and parameter names, it will build a new product structure and it will store it in this particular array. That code, which will be looping through each product and then taking its data and building a new object of the product will look like this. What it means is that for each product, and also by the way, I've realized that this should be the correct code. So for each product in the products array, it will create a new item, which is an object right here. And for each item, it will add the item ID, which will be taken from the product, then item name, it will be also taken from the product, price and quantity. Of course, this code could be more optimized to look for conditions. For example, if quantity is not available, then it would not add the quantity, but this would get too complex for this video. So this is a simpler example. And then once that particular item is built, it will be added to the items array. So this is empty right now, but once the 
product is built, or in this case item, it will be added to the items array. Then it will go to the second product, do the same thing, and then put it to the items array again. And finally, this variable will return the items array, the final array, which will contain one or more products. So let's take a look if this is working. I will name this, let's say, products to items and click save. Then I can click preview to refresh the preview mode. I am on a thank you page. And if I click on transaction and go to variables, and I check my custom JavaScript variable, here we have the array, and we have one product, and we have the second product. It took data from here, because if you take a closer look, you will see free ABC ID, and it's the same free ABC right here. But the structure is different. The parameter names now follow the requirements of Google Analytics. And now if I wanted to use this variable in my Google Analytics tag, so first of all, I would need to have the purchase tag. And here I could define the items parameter and its value would be the custom JavaScript variable. And then if I wanted to also include, let's say, transaction ID, because that is a requirement for the purchase event, I would then just create a data layer variable that accesses this one. Let me show you this part as an example, and then you would have to apply the same thing for other parameters. So this is transaction number, and I would just have to create a data layer variable like this, where I am looking for transaction number, just to double check that it's the same, yeah. And then I will name this variable. And now this tag, when it fires, it would take transaction ID from the data layer and items would be taken from the custom JavaScript variable that takes information from the data layer and then modifies it to adapt to GA4. And of course, you would also need to do the same thing with data layer variables for other parameters like currency, value, and then let me check what we have else, coupon code, so coupon in GA4. And then here I would need to create a data layer variable for currency code and insert it right here. Then for a value, I would need to insert the data layer variable of order total. And then for coupon code, I would need to create a data layer variable, which is called coupon code. Again, I realized that this video at the end became much more complex, but my idea of this tutorial is just to show you the general concept and theoretical things that could be achieved with custom JavaScript. But if you really want to unlock the power of this, you would need to dive deeper into JavaScript and how to write the code. And there are various useful things in JavaScript that you can apply. And if you want to learn that from the very beginning, then my JavaScript course for Google Tech Manager is what you need because we practice a lot there and there are various examples where you will have to actually write the code. I will show you how to write the code and then you will be able to test your results almost immediately. And that's how you can use custom JavaScript variable in Google Tech Manager. I understand that some parts of this video might have been overwhelming or too difficult, but that's just how it goes. JavaScript is a large topic, and it's not something that can be simply explained in a single video. However, if you want to learn JavaScript for Google Tag Manager, then take a look at my course. I will post a link to it below the video. It is very practical, filled with exercises, and you don't need to know anything about JavaScript to get started. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.